Hey, welcome to Two, Two Guys, guys same, same Person. person. Wait. You're here today? <laughs> no, but I found something cool and I wanted to show you. Mm, what is it? <laughs> Do you want to guess? No. I want to talk to oh. David Lopez, our guest today. He's the drummer for yeah, Inside Outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get friend. to all that, but uh, it's a magic wand. What? <laughs> it's a magic wand. It's a stick Watch. we found out. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, it's wait, really wait, wait, where are you going? Wait, wait, wait. I wasn't ready for the interview. I... I uh... I guess let's do this. From Chicago originally. Nope. I know the story. Where are you from? I'm from Tucson, Dirty T, Arizona. <laughs> Excellent. And what brought uh, you all the way up to the Great Lakes? Um, I was looking for schools for college, yeah. um, like my freshman year of high school, and was just looking for audio engineering school. I didn't even know like what the major would be, what it was, mm-hmm. um, and places obviously all over the country started popping up, including even in Arizona, but... I knew I wanted to get out. I knew I didn't know anyone from Tucson that was yeah. like famous <laughs> or like in in the studio right. doing, doing doing the, the music thing. Exactly. Doing. That's in L.A. That's in New York. You know, you name name all your other cities, Miami, Nashville, whatever. And Chicago was just kind of like always like subliminal to me, like growing up a White Sox fan yeah. because they did spring training in Tucson for a while. Oh, and like cool. um that was just kind of like a, a little subliminal thing where I was like, you know, like L.A., like I grew up going there every summer. Been wasn't there, always. That, yeah. Kinda, yeah. You know? New York, scary. Florida. Huge, no. Yeah. Uh, anywhere else. I don't know. It just didn't interest me other than Chicago. Yeah. So I just kind of like took that leap. I knew I was going to be in the dorms. So I felt safe. I knew what college life was because I sure. worked at a college in high school. So, yeah, I just felt like I was like, OK, like, let's just go for it and see if I can what I can do with that. And got some great scholarships and great supportive parents and I was gonna made say, it here into it because that's kind of a big hop and i know um, just as a parent i think because <laughs> i knew i had to be convincing <laughs> from the get-go okay. I, that's and that's why i started my journey looking for colleges like freshman sophomore year of high school i yeah. was just like i'm not gonna wait until senior it wasn't year a big surprise that you wanted to leave yeah, sure cool. it wasn't a big surprise by sophomore year i was like we were doing columbia did like some tours around and they had, went to phoenix so we drove up there and listened to like a q a kind of thing and so that kind we of met second semester or is that so second year six months to a year that's all that you kind of had under your chicago belt before you and i Pretty Met. much, yeah, yeah. Dang, that's weird if to think about because yeah. you were so just, you fit in, and I was not from Chicago, <laughs> and I was just like, this guy's been here twenty five million years. That's cool. <laughs> um, so you have graduated since? Oh yeah. Why stay? I mean, the the travel bug seems to be in you. Let's go see something <laughs> new. Um, I mean, I just kind of got comfy. I I finished school and mm-hmm. had a job right out of school. I was interning slash like starting in your field, work. right? Yeah, part time at a studio. And uh, that was kind of, it it was promised, not really promised, but it looked promising that I would move towards full time maybe um, over time, which I did. And um, yeah, that was just kind of what kept me around. I made all our connections through school and was still open to, you know, playing and and doing all that. And my junior year, I moved into like an apartment and I stayed through for for a whole year. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like, I remember my first, or going into junior year was my like first summer in Chicago. And that was like, it's old. Okay. You know, like I saw why it was worth being here in the winter and just living here in general. I completely (laughs) agree with you. Um, so that brings us kind of from the beginning up till graduation and we're free in the city. Mm hmm. So you start working Gravity Studios, right? Yep. Okay, so you're working there. You earn your spot full time, but I know you're playing. We've mm-hmm. done, you know, the intermittent show here and there at Al's birthday or you know whatever. <laughs> wow. So you tell me about kind of like up until now and these you know current projects that you've got going on. Tell me about your playing after college mm-hmm. while working. Yeah. Um. It kind of. I think. Well, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, yeah. like not right out of college, but COVID. I mean, I graduated the. What, 
Dodged Damn, that. I don't even remember what year I graduated. 2019, yeah. So <laughs> I dodged it by a year. Exactly. Yeah. I felt like I dodged it by more. But yeah, it was really close. And um, all of uh, lockdown, I was at the time like an eight-minute walk from the studio. So I just got to – I had the keys and I would just go in and do my work from nine to, say, one because yeah. there wasn't any work <laughs> really other than keeping the lights on and the place clean. And then I'd get to both set up and record drums and play the drums. Yeah. And there was a lot of uh, interest in having me play on other people's projects. Um, some saw how sessions would get booked and they would expect there to be a session drummer there and there wasn't. So I was, or luckily, like, yep, <laughs> luckily I was there and yeah. said, I'll do it. It's just going to take an extra hour or so or whatever. Right. But because I had been kind of in that practice of, of doing that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, kind of just was in the studio zone for a while and the projects that I work on kind of dwindled over time or leaving college just because wasn't seeing people as much and was having to do more work than being able to, yeah. to play shows certain nights or weekends or whatever and um yeah but recently more I feel like I've been playing a lot live with just more people and acts in general and i think just from, from those connections you know my friend taylor and Absolutely. we play in he plays in my band i play in his band and yep. we play in a million others of our friends just because someone needs a guitarist someone needs a drummer and that's that's what i'm available for when and, you were when you were doing a lot of the studio work did you ever consider just becoming a studio kind of musician you know like fine i'm your guy give me an extra thou yeah. or whatever and then i'll be your drummer for anything that you've got definitely definitely have thought about it definitely did the like air gigs like sign yep. up and be like okay how does this all work and then being like man like there's people out here like only charging 50 dollars per song yeah out of the but they're recording out of their bedroom or their basement or yep. their garage where they kind of had that accessibility granted i had the studio accessibility it was still you know paying your dues and yes. and your costs up front for that and i think just kind of putting a a brand or putting my name out there that was kind of more of like the the tricky part to do with with essentially being a full-time like mm -hmm. engineer slash musician like really trying to more just focus on my craft than stay disciplined with that. Yeah. And I haven't really until recently started to try and take advantage of the, like, free advertising through, like, doing TikToks and Instagram reels and whatever. Yes. And, you know, just kind of be more in that network with social media. I have kind of was just, like... Uh, whatever the saying is, I don't, what is the nose to the grindstone <laughs> yeah, or some shit like that? Yep. Yeah, get some elbow grease <laughs> in there. <laughs> you know, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, now I know that you are currently um in a group that actually just released a video. We're gonna get to that in a second. But I know that this has also been through a bunch of iterations. Um, yeah. You are currently, um, your, as of this recording, she's your partner mm -hmm. in real life, but also <laughs> you play and sing together and have kind of the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that little journey, because I, I genuinely can't remember if you guys found each other as musicians mm -hmm. or as like a couple first and that what happened gotcha yeah it was it was as musicians yeah. but we were we we always kind of had you for sure so the the this beginning of the story goes to i was at gravity yep um again just graduated that august 2019 mina moved to chicago correct Oak. her name is mina by the way yeah. hi, mina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mina moved to Chicago and started interning at Gravity. Okay. Um, so that's kind of just pretty much how we met. Yep. Like her first day, I had a session or something, walked in. She was in one of the studios showing another intern or staff member her something music. Nice. And I was just like, sounds cool. And, and, and that was it. No, and but. <laughs> sparks, fireworks, jets <laughs> yeah, over the. Exactly. No, but yeah, we kind of just vibed more as just kind of being friends you know like at, at, the, sure. at the end we i i needed a friend at that time she needed someone to just Absolutely. be a friend just being for, oop, this would have been just this been around here. the kick off to covid right yeah just literally right before again this is uh, yeah 2019 yep. um working together and kind of just you know showing her just learning that she's a vocalist a great vocalist a totally. talented musician um you know trying to trying to get her involved in the community so like i was playing with what was at the time flora yep um and we were um doing gigs all around the city and i'm trying to remember if there was any other 
particular gigs or something. But, you know, everyone from the studio, we were all just kind of like... Doing something. Yeah, doing yeah. something. It, yeah, this is pre-COVID. Shit was popping. <laughs> so, so you guys are just working together, Office Place Romance, totally understand it. <laughs> but there, there's a difference in being like, hey, let's date and let's be together and try this. And then mm-hmm. having a separate, let's actually be in a musical group that mm-hmm. happens. It's, it's kind of, it's work. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Totally. I, I mean, there's tons of people that do... Um, you know, dating and and projects and stuff together. Yeah, you guys are working hard on this thing. You just released mm-hmm. the music video, which we're going to talk about. It's linked in the description. Um, tell me really quickly before we get into the specifics of the projects, what it's like for you as a person to switch between, you know, <laughs> yo, hey babe, let's go, versus like, yo, you're sharp. Today. You know what I mean? And how <laughs> is there? It's, and, and we can edit anything. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but genuinely, just on a surface level. Switching those gears mm-hmm. and having those conversations where it's like, I, look, just because you're sharp today, that has nothing to do with like me and you going home later. I love you. I'll see you. Let's get some fries. But sure. Right. <laughs> or whatever. From better. <laughs> if she's got something for you. you no, I mean? we, we don't. I mean, we just, it's, it's trust. It, we both don't. We respect each other as musicians and yeah. what we do and it's who we are. Thing. Yeah. Where we come from. I mean, like there's no nitpickiness with her i don't feel like hyper attention on her just because we're in a band together i you know like i at the end of the day i always kind of like know my role in the rhythm section and what i'm supposed to do and like we didn't gig together until like a couple years ago and we had already kind of started like again like our friendship romance whatever but we were playing the like open mic socials that gravity had and again with taylor Mm -hmm. and also my former roommate best friend chris yeah um he was kind of they were we were all just kind of like a little band like we were using the socials as just a way to get together and practice and jam lockdown came and then we were all vibing and jamming together we were kind of our own little little pod me and chris lived together mina was right down the street and so it just kind of made sense to to regularly meet up even just keep creating music even though we were kind of in this weird end of the world phase <laughs> kind of thing insane yeah insane and so you know again we we've always kind of been able to decipher the creative difference and the like being together and just hanging sure. out and being goofy and like living together we we always kind of just have a sort of formal way of yeah just being like let's have a meeting you know like let's have right. a meeting it's strictly about band yep. stuff we're not gonna complain David about who's gonna do the di- <laughs> Or the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. And cool. again, we, we trust each other so much that there's not like a back and forth and, and pickiness and judging of the music. Yeah. It just kind of flows. Mina, she's just such a natural, great songwriter. So Genuinely. like, I remember you brought her over once just in a friend setting and mm-hmm. like, this is Mina. Mm-hmm. And we looked on her, um, I was, I, band camp. Band yeah. camp. I, was, I was a few sheets to the wind and I tossed her like a ton of money. She's like, this song's for a dollar. I'm like, here's 20. Give me the size of it. But genuinely, because even in that, you know, half cocked Ryan, you know, evening, they're genuine talent, mm-hmm. in, not in just performance, um, but in songwriting, knowing that was all her. And mm-hmm. if somebody had helped her with the recording of the actual music, still it was her song. And mm-hmm awesome and then we've gigged together yeah um through a couple of different things i mentioned one of our one of my former bosses but currently um friend al Mm -hmm. um, would throw these parties and we actually did his last one together Mm -hmm. the band right now is called inside out (laughs) with the new song human nature and we'll post that in the in the link below but at al's party because that's that. I remember Taylor, yeah. Mina, so, you. Mm-hmm. And Chris. Chris. Rasan was playing bass for us at that time. So, uh, yeah, we're kind of just... We we all play together. Yeah. And we just... <laughs> you but, know, but like, we all stretch out on different projects. No, it that was... to be most of the people. It's how it works. Exactly, yeah. Cool. I mean, it was Mata Mata was the name we were going... But that's what we started with. Yes. Um, that was our name. We... We were like, what's a, adja- you know, Taylor, I think Googled like adjacent to chameleon or something. And this big, ugly, <laughs> snapping turtle looking amphibious yeah. demon popped up and then was called a Mata Mata. Dumb. And we were like, okay, like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing it. Um, which apparently Mata is kill in Spanish, which I did not know. I mean, I don't know well, much Spanish, but so we were kill kill to some people and we promise, or to those people, I want to say now, I'm sorry if you ever felt. <laughs> threatened by a four four <laughs> or five piece fusion band but they were probably expecting like some hardcore or doing some punk rock or... stevie wonder and shaka khan right, covers like <laughs> um 
expect Shaka Khan to come out of Kill Kill. Uh, no. But that's cool. But yeah, so we were that. We recently, it was the same exact configuration yep. on Sunday, uh, that gig I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Um, same configuration, but we were say less because it was more church appropriate yeah. and less less confusing you know like mata mata that's that is like a psychedelic like <laughs> jazz fusion know. band like say less that was fitting we did all r&b covers and everyone was loving it and you know we just kind of ride that wave of like the fusion r&b yes. and we're and we're dipping in a rock more we really want to do that psychedelic rock kind of feel me and mina we've talked about or realized a lot of our like journey even though she's couple years older Mm -hmm. we've had a lot of like the same like musical journeys at some point and like the same interests like we both love oh fuck i gotta pause because i am i am blanking on the name of the album i just want to be like oh that one young the giants album dude that's so good (laughs) i don't don't remember the name of it but like i want you guys to know that this professional engineer (laughs) and musician doesn't know the name mind over matter (laughs) that's because i hate that song now (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but still yeah, so, influence. like, we, we both, like, had the same influences. We both love the same albums at different, mm-hmm. like, times growing up. Tame Impala. Uh, mm-hmm. We loved Mind Over Matter, Young the Giant, their, like, sophomore album or junior album, maybe. But yeah. whatever it was, it was gorgeous. And, like, you know, we've done road trips now together. And, like, all that time just kind of being confined, living together, mm-hmm. all that. It's just naturally we've worked out being just just life partners and the music that's stuff cool. you know that's just the fun stuff that's what we do it's both of our jobs you know mina teaches she she's performing as well with her own people and projects and stuff so we just kind of are really thankful that we got like that balance yeah. in that life that works out and again with our friends too like chris like i've known him just as long from columbia and, For sure. ta- and taylor i mean we same thing we met my june no yeah my junior year um at columbia and just we've been playing and doing a million things ever since so um so tell me then about inside outside this is original music correct because i know like mata mata um, say less. You were saying these are covers and mm-hmm. specific genres. So now you've got Inside Outside. You guys just released Human Nature, mm-hmm. um, which is not a cover. Right? Which is not a cover. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming that you guys, you know, your your cover stuff and playing out and getting mm-hmm. out there and having fun. Those will be those different names. But Inside Outside is a new original venture. Tell me a little bit about it. Correct. Yes, Inside Outside is more of mine and Mina's. Mina and I's God, I'm terrible with speaking, <laughs> but fine. Inside Outside is our more like yeah passion yeah. project and like personal music and something that is more just focused with Mina and I yep. like me doing the, a lot of the engineering and production and drumming and rhythmic stuff. Mina, like I said, is a great songwriter mm-hmm. and she comes up with a lot of, if not all the melodies and, and harmonies and stuff. And I just have my little, like, I don't know, Rick Rubin moments of like, <laughs> do that again. Right, and, you right, know, right, like I she'll be it. messing around doing like, and I'm like, just oh, the last two notes. And then, and candles. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it all bounces. All, it all works together. Um, yeah. The other groups are, we use, say less now as mm-hmm. i think what we're gonna okay. continue with mata mata is kind of like a just fun That's what it was inside name yeah nice um say less will just be kind of yeah like our our fun band for the al birthday parties for your wedding anniversary yeah. the luncheon at a church you know like we we're just happy to like play two hours of music and yeah. music that we love and by people that influence us you know we played a lot of again stevie wonder shaka khan we played some earth wind and fire and like the of course like the more modern like type of versions or arrangements of those songs too like we did a the robert glassberg version of uh everybody wants to rule the world with mm-hmm. layla hathaway you know like we just love and appreciate all these different artists and and their influence on us so we like playing the cover is just straight up and then mina and i have kind of just taken the wheel on the project that involves the four of us and now we have um her dad is a insane he's actually on human nature playing bass who did the instrumental yes yes so he did both bass and guitar um on on human nature um and he's yeah he's like the the go-to guy in in houston like he's he's the 
bass studio. player of Studio Live. I mean, just nice. for knowledge, like <laughs> Glenn Ackerman. Okay. Yes. So he, shout out Glenn. Yeah, shout out <laughs> Glennius. <laughs> Glennius. Ah, cool, now I gotta man. get. Way to now go. I gotta edit in his like his. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll experiment. link to him. Um, because that's super cool. I definitely I gotta get Mina in here then because I'd love to know her story and that whole background how she ended up here. Totally. She uh, from Houston? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's a hop. Damn, I'm so sorry, Glenn. Glenn it's like he's because it's like Instagram's like Glennius Planet, and then I think his artist name is not just Glenn Ackerman. Dude, we got, will link all of it down. It's, it's in the like the fusion so experiment. Can, you yeah, know? You like check he's out got, Glenn. Give him a ton of your money. Oh no, the album. Okay, okay, okay. So he does have <laughs> stuff on Spotify under okay. under Glenn Ackerman, but. The Glennius Robot Invasion was his... Glennius Robot Invasion. Was his first cool. album, or not first album. I'm just making shit up now. <laughs> Don't edit. <laughs> it's <laughs> Anyways, fine. all right, back to... Yeah, Glenn, Glenn was <laughs> playing bass and guitar. Recorded down in Houston. No, he, Houston. He, he came up here. He was here for, like, this was, God, like, already almost three summers ago. Wow. Yeah, we recorded... We started the bones of this song, of that song, yeah. a while ago. And, um, yeah, just dire- direct in <laughs> to my Apollo, and we got that. We got... Dr- drums were already pre-tracked um, from Call Gravity. Sir. At the beginning, where you're like, hello, sir, nice to meet you. You're the boyfriend, I mean, right? yeah, yeah, but I don't know. No, okay, here's the reason, no. I was never like, hello, sir, hello. good day, because... <laughs> The first time I met him yeah. was Mina was living with her ex boyfriend, um, in in the same neighborhood we in now, boy. <laughs> Isn't this wild? <laughs> um, and I was invited over for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, this was 2020. Um, yeah, COVID Thanksgiving. COVID Thanksgiving. Yeah. I would have been just home alone, which I was fine with. I've been home alone every Thanksgiving. Hey, Thanksgiving is a beautiful day to just do nothing and just be home. I agree. And like now with my partner, I'm like, this is great. But like now I'm just yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. no traffic. There's you no You are worried about nothing. nothing. That's cool. Anyway, so I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm at home not worried about nothing or like the day before even maybe mean uh, invited me over for dinner. Yeah. I meet Glenn and he's just like, you know, we're just vibing. I wasn't, I wasn't the boyfriend, Not so I didn't okay. have to be like, sir. So you were vibing with dad and, before yeah. you were even vibing with Mina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Glenn. I'll give him two. <laughs> okay. So you met, hang out, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then the human nature thing. So he recorded that three years ago. Were you dating yet? Yes. We, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah we so were dating by met, that time. Fast forward. Hey, Dad, you want to come? Like, how <laughs> does that quick. conversation happen? Yeah, was so, he already doing that for her? I, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it was our since it's our project. Mina was kind of the one to like yeah. invite and be like, I, you know, or kind of just bre- straight up brought it up right away. Like, I want my dad to play on this, and like, dope. But, like, I'm not gonna <laughs> say no yeah. to that. Like, you <laughs> old? <laughs> no, I get you that. You know, highest XP weapon like yeah, available, seriously. and I'm just like. And decline <laughs> <laughs> like no no it wasn't like that at all it was just Excellent. like hey my dad's gonna play on this and it's like but would you cool. would you tour with dad oh yeah if totally that, you, think you would yeah if, totally like, this popped off now like, we gotta go we gotta go play the grammys dad, we, go we gotta go play so That'd also so i mean shout out to benji benji okay. daniels um i met him or me and mina met him from playing with saltwater tap that's taylor's yes. group uh with garen and, uh, oh yeah. Oh, you got the, yep, yep. Yep. You got the EP right there. And, oh, and you got the bootleg, uh, mixtape. Sound cooler. Yeah. I was That's there. what's up. R.I.P. Golden Dagger. R.I.P. That's, that's right. one of my you first TikToks is you guys playing at uh, Golden Dagger. Wow, that's a relic now. <laughs> Dude, uh, and I know they have a new bar. Go, uh, for those, uh, we're not going to talk about it long, but Golden Dagger was a really cool spot here in Chicago. Um, let a lot of people play. Um great sound it was previously the tonic room before that previously too. the tonic room but Which then they sold it there. but the owner's got a new bar somewhere i don't know not much yet, not my problem <laughs> not so my, anyway yeah. you're playing with saltwater <laughs> tap met benji yes and benji is this wizard of a bass player he lives in jersey now so he actually yeah. gets flown or well like they you know i'm, I'm not gonna get into the, the rider <laughs> details but i don't know he he you know he's he still has his family here he's still yeah. you know has, has 
home so i think it's kind of like the perfect storm that's of cool. benji can be in town and we're able to book at shuba's or whatever let's go or golden dagger let's go, go. Yeah. um so that's how we met um and we had same thing perfect storm of a saltwater tap show and our first inside outside outside show uh the same week so we were like benji you want to play these cool songs that yep. we we have and are ready and you can play and so he was down with it, um, and he's still super down. So it's kind of a mystery who's going to be on base again. We got Rasan yeah. with in the in the Say Less project. We yep. got Benji who's available, but we gotta we gotta fly him <laughs> and find out when that's working and when planes aren't falling apart. <laughs> Oops, are we boing. getting political? <laughs> <laughs> Is Boeing political? Boing I mean, boing boing. <laughs> as long as we can keep that conversation in the air, longer than keep their planes in the air, I think we'll be all right. I got, the, I got the air horn. <laughs> it's not loud enough. It's like a wimpy. It's so wimpy too. <laughs> there we go. I'll just edit right to that. <laughs> um, well, you you touched on this really quickly, but I want to dive kind of into it outside of your own projects, finding people to play your music or to cover or whatever. Mm. I just want to know how you approach. The idea of maybe you go to a new city. How would you start fresh without having the benefit of a music school where you learn musicians in the city? Sure, yeah. How would you find people to do what you need? I mean, (laughs) that's tough. Um, Because, I mean, I've assumed, I assume you've even been in the position where you're like, you need a a guitar player. Yeah. Our guys aren't in. Where, Where do you go to find somebody who you don't know? Sure. I mean, I think, again, like, I'm grateful now to have as many of the connections as I do in Chicago because like now I feel even more comfortable where it's not just like, I mean, Taylor's my go-to guy, but if I know he's not going to be available, I can either think of a few more people Mm -hmm. and then like, I don't know them or firsthand where I can just be like, Hey gig, you in? And Taylor's like, yes or no. Whereas like someone else, I have to be like, it's on this date at this location at this address. And what is your rate? Because, (laughs) you know, like it's kind of more secretary mode or I don't know. Thankfully we, for at least any personal project, I haven't run into a situation where it was like, Oh crap, we need a bass player. Kind of was like that when we first did, the Mata Mata gig yeah. for Al's birthday because we just didn't have anyone available or no. And Rasan plays with Chris, um, with Aaron is the name of the artist. And so Aaron RX or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Aaron Hex. Aaron and the Hex. That's the band. Well, and yeah. that includes Chris, uh, Chris and yeah. Rasan. And so that's how we were able to connect with him. Um, I think also, like, I'm thankful having now knowing people that play and live in New York and people that live in Nashville. Some of those people being from college, some of those people even being from Tucson, which is crazy. So, and LA, of course. So, friends, ask friends. friends. Ask ask friends. They're going to know other people who play guitar players. (laughs) Get involved somehow. Yes, yeah. you, you sounds like your bread and butter was engineering. I mean, I know that you were playing in the, in the ensembles, but you were always like working on the gear, and exactly the recording sound, and that's gonna inherently have a trough of musicians come through, and somebody's gonna like your hair and say something, <laughs> and you're gonna start a friendship. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that person, so just getting involved. If you don't have any specific like guitar players to rent, immediately <laughs> dot gov sure. that you can go to. <laughs> right. Cool. No, I mean there there are sites out there, and those do work for the people who are sure. like kind of more in that like mode already you know like if they're already through the in the facebook marketplace where i'm home might as well look at some classifieds you know of, of musicians wanted or you know i feel like or even restaurants or venues that have never booked live music before that are starting to because it's becoming a very Absolutely. very popular thing I, anywhere I and everywhere mike at a bar that did that it was our there little corner hole in the wall here for sports mm-hmm. and then they were like let's do music and now they're <laughs> You're seeing that pop up a lot. You're yeah. looking for stuff to do, and that's cool. Exactly. And sometimes it's, okay, I'm going to figure out and learn how to do this. And sometimes, like I said, it's the Facebook Marketplace. It's Craigslist. It's the it's the cold emails. to. I remember at the studio, there was only a handful of times, but 
of mostly studio musicians being like, hey, like, I'm available <laughs> if you need me. But also, to like, every once in a while, a venue or, like, a new music hall in the suburbs, mostly, that would be like, hey, we're, this is Diane, and we <laughs> we need bands to cool. book for the full year, so send us bands. And I was just like, here's my band and my other band and this band. But no, I mean, there, it's... uh. There's a lot of different ways I've seen it and experienced it, and now I'm fortunate that I do have those different connections yeah. all through the city, but also in other cities and, and anywhere, really. If and that involves a tour someday, I can call on those people, you know? Or again, oh, like, yeah. just having the trust and relationship with the band I have now, it's like, if we're going to tour, like, we're going to do it right. We're gonna, yep. Everyone's going to get paid. Everyone's going to eat. Everyone's going to sleep on the bed. Transparency exactly. and... I'm still looking for a good a good word for it, but Schmans good means. deals. Like this is a good deal for me to do, right? Something those are so hard to find now because, like, if you can't bring a hundred people mm-hmm. to a bar, they won't let you play. But the good deal is supposed to be like, yeah, and then we'll both promote, and we the bar brings fifty, the band brings fifty, and we all win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus you can't bring this, then no. There's no deal here. It sounds like with a band, hey, you either bring this kind of expertise and this many years of experience or F off versus, hey, guys, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we all get paid. Are you into this? Yeah. And if everybody says yes, the whole tour should, as long as you like each other. <laughs> Go according be, to plan. Be real smooth. And even mm-hmm. at the end, you can get together and be like, hey, I didn't like how we did that thing. Next time, let's sure. do this thing. And then you go, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, I wanted to switch quick gears um, because you were talking about knowing people and getting people to fill in and... There are inherently people out there without people skills, without, you know, uh, the resources available to them um, like that. So what are your thoughts on AI and its relationship <laughs> with music <laughs> and the future? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, as a musician, AI has been very beneficial to me when I can't put together a fucking basic email that would normally take me like you know like i'd type it in like half an hour and then yep. like walk away and like come back and read it and be like is this what it is this do season? i sound like a dink or yeah like a, baby? Like, off as a jerk <laughs> right got it exactly um yeah i being just a freelancer in general and being that i have to like you know put on the different hats there are yep. those times where i do have to be formal and address and corporate and all that yada yeah. yada and ai has helped me just Crack like emails. i'm like yeah i like look i just need this basic information being sent put it in yep. wor- good work gooder words than i can and it does um i have not experimented with any sort of ai that has that alters the sound that that Gen- like that regenerate music. yeah generative like makes my I voice guess. talk back to me <laughs> nothing like that I, i've heard of those experiences yep. i've i've talked to people firsthand face to face that are like yeah i did this and it sucked and i've heard ai music i've heard like either a little npr bits or like on yep. vocalo they were like check out this ai rap and i was like no because it was just it, it's like it, the music sounds like the images yeah. right, that you see where it's just like it's, it's just it's there but yeah it's like transformers so, musically like, everybody has four fingers like that's the thing that's going on in yeah, AI art mm-hmm. now it's like they always have four fingers. Or like so. seven. Like, yep. Something is just not <laughs> the right. Eye, the other is. eye is like too droopy and, and wide. So do you feel threatened as a human maker and engineer of music? Um, This is debatable, but I think like certain basic commands are things out there that already work algorithmically for music. Mm-hmm. I think AI could be pretty beneficial in that sometimes. I think... For example, making pop music with an artist or I should say just a client (laughs) of someone that Mm -hmm. doesn't know how music works and can't keep time or whatever. Or even just they are a band and their their drummer isn't good and so they can't keep time or the bass player or the guy playing the shaker, whatever. When you're making the pop track, everything has to be to the grid. Whether that is the same tempo throughout or it wavers a little, like everyone's there's locked. Grid, and there's someone yeah, hitting there's his... Changes, the da- the downbeat is... Yeah. yeah, the downbeat is defined mm-hmm. with everyone hitting it at the same time. And so I think sometimes there's tedious tasks out there like aligning, time aligning things or vocal tuning or whatever. I don't know. I'd be down to give 
AI a pass at it, and of course, hey. and then review it. You know, there there's like a tool. An, it will it's, be a beauty. It's, it's just like a tool. Tools. It's the new Pro Tools. It's the new smart tools yep. essentially because a lot of people can they'll know yeah if it's all loops and you didn't really do anything sure and, and even now even some of our some of the big um music um makers that use a lot of pre-recorded backings mm-hmm. almost as their as their whole you know thing mm-hmm. um rubs people the wrong way already <laughs> yeah and, but they're but that doesn't mean that uh, a green day might not be using pro tools live on stage to Mm-hmm. correct some other things or, or, or whatever. So as long as people use it as a tool, it sounds like you're cool with it versus yeah, I think, doing. Yeah. You know, and definitely not in like a, a live aspect either. I totally just in the studio production, like that's where I see it really like having its best limitations. Like yeah. you're saying like on stage live, like people already use auto tune in, in a live situation. I don't know what they would want or need. AI, AI to do for them right. in that in that experience, and I think it also like AI is a, like at the end of the day like an audience experience. Like you're being serviced something, yep. so like I can't imagine like I can't I can't I just can't imagine trying to create with it in the in that in the way music works because I can maybe for fun like type in words of like what I want to hear and see what it does again. Just yeah. like a fun little music tool like the way you would like a child's you know little toy when like the battery started dying and it's like i'm like yo like <laughs> gotta make some you but, know <laughs> but i hear you because i also inherently feel like there's a reason that ever since we figured out how to do musics through our throats <laughs> we've been doing it ever since as a way to communicate with each other mm-hmm. even i know that popularly if you go to college they'll tell you music starts with gregorian chant <laughs> Bet you there was some 10 billion year old lady humming to her grandkid while the saber tooth tigers were surrounding the village. I'm just saying there is inherently a way to communicate in a way that words don't seem to reach, Mm -hmm. um, at least for humans. And I know that the industry and money making aspect of music can be threatened by AI, but I don't think we'll ever stop. I think after the fires of World War Four have burned, (laughs) we'll still sing about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, Okay, I want to round out this um, interview uh, with one question that I think I already know the answer to, but I don't think they do. David Lopez, what was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Mm. This is a tough one to remember. It was definitely a CD. I'm not that fucking young. (laughs) (laughs) You hear that? Anyone who ever bought a vinyl? It was a CD because he's old. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, everyone thinks my oh, everyone thinks the first album I bought was on a, like for iPod or something iTunes, like that. Yeah. Yeah, which I could see. But no. Hmm. If I remember correctly, I'm I was, thinking it was Songs in the Key of Life. Really? Was it not? I might have been my, maybe not my first vinyl. I don't know cuz I might have been gifted vinyl. I'm pretty sure the first record I bought with my own money was fuck with my own money. Like, how did I earn? Yeah. How did I earn this? Like, <laughs> because I was definitely a kid. I was definitely a kid when I bought my my or like at least was like I don't know. I could have been like, you know, told my mom like I want this yeah. CD because it's like we're if we're at the CD store well, like most, or like okay. maybe not uh, the f- but you know what, or the question I guess is Barnes and Noble the, like. the one that you like I, I I'm earning my money and I, I now I'm into this thing mm-hmm. and I want to buy it versus like I listen to the radio sure like, mm. you can't remember it's okay uh, the no, entire audience is gonna laugh at you at home <laughs> get them get them everybody <laughs> This is this is live. They're commenting. And then this is live, and they're commenting right now. All 18 million people currently listening are saying "lol" simultaneously. <laughs> uh, the first record I bought with my own money, I think, was Kanye West graduation. Ooh, good one. That sounds right. Yeah. Like I again, I could have been like. We could have been at Barnes and Noble, and yeah, like right. my sister was getting a book. You get a book. I'm like, fuck no, I want a right. CD, and like you know, got a Santana. Like Kanye West graduation. Kind of I'm pretty out sure. Like, 
the jungle is clearing. Yeah, that like might music. That man. still might have been like a birthday. Like I, I, I ate it. it. I <laughs> <laughs> like or bought it with birthday money. Yep. I don't know. That was definitely cool. that was That's yeah. A good one. But no, when you when you say like the first like interest and everything, yeah, that was one where I was like, I I want this. Like I wasn't into really hip hop or anything like that until kind of that album that was my first like yeah. exploration i guess into it i my cousins they grew up you know in the g unit era and like listen to gangsta totally. rap type stuff west coast it's pop, funny but... it's funny when you when you think about it like kind of your coming of musical age <laughs> and how you're like what was what did i like before that because mm. my first album i've mentioned was uh kid rock's rebel without a cause um or devil without a cause edited from walmart but before that Music was what was on what was big. It was literally mm-hmm. Britney Spears and Sync. Sure, yeah. The whole thing that was do- Michael Jackson yeah. dominating anything that came into a seven year old's you know mind. Um, but then I I bought that album and now I liked you know that kind of rock and roll, which mm-hmm. led me towards you know Hail Satan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's cool. It's a cool coming musical age story. Um, Kanye West graduation. That's excellent. Okay. Well, everybody, this has been David Lopez. David, you just released um, the music video we've got linked in the description. Anything in the future? Uh, Releases, sing- gigs. A single. Ooh, another, called- another song will be coming out in June, hopefully. And we also have been slacking on getting the band camp up because we know people love to support. Totally. More that way, and we again, we've just been slacking it. We just have to put the song on there, and then it's done. But anyways, we're gonna put that, but we want to put it with um, a demo so that when uh, you buy the single slash album, whatever, however, Bandcamp defines it, mm-hmm. you get the demo as well. But obviously, it'll be there for streaming and, and such. But it's kind of a Bandcamp exclusive uh, for nine ninety nine. No, it's not gonna be that much. But. Awesome. All right. Well, check out Human Nature by Inside Outside. Link in the description. Uh, keep an eye out for their single coming out in either June or, or later twenty twenty four. Dave, thanks so much for coming out, man. This was fun.